In the last session, we got started with automating the entire infrastructure we created so far manually. Uh, we automated data factory, storage account, containers using the infrastructure as a cool co code tool called Terraform. Um, since we've been talking that uh, Azure Data Factory is an orchestration tool, in this session we're going to get started with the um, one of the most famous uh, or most used uh, activity in Data Factory that's going to be copy activity. Um, there are a plethora of uh, connectors available, more than 90 connectors available in Azure Data Factory and we're going to use the copy activity to copy data from different data sources which is going to be from a storage uh, account to another storage account blob. So if you go to the, um, the source container which we created, I've uploaded a bunch of CSV files and if you go to the destination container we haven't got anything underneath it. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform the operation of copying all these files into this particular file. Now the business case could be you um, want to make sure that once your data has land up in a particular storage container, you want to analyze and transform the data. And once you've cleansed the data, you push it to some sort of uh, cleansed folder or container that's called blob storage in our case and then you use those containers uh, files within that containers to uh, publish transformation or analyze the result uh, for business intelligence or application consumption. So what we're going to do is we are going to use the dashboard of uh, the Azure Data Factory. There's a, already a copy data factory task available. You can create it one from here or you can go to the author section and start creating from there. So for the simplicity we're going to click on the copy data and uh, we're going to select the trigger whether we want to create it trigger it now or later it's going to be uh, run now and it's going to be source type now there are multiple source types available I, um, as I mentioned apart from Azure resources you've got a bunch of other resources also so apparently you've got Amazon resources Google AdWord BigQuery um, you've got uh, resources from Microsoft, uh, other products, uh, you've got resources for SAP as well, uh, Amazon S3 buckets, um, you've got Cassandra, MongoDB, uh, Adobe as well. So there are a lot of um, connectors already available and it supports majority of the um, connectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Azure blob storage because that is where our um, CSV files are sitting. Uh, if you look at over here, it needs to first establish a connection between your storage account and the Azure Data Factory, right? Uh, in this case, the storage account, however, uh, in some cases could have been uh, S3 or um, Oracle or Adobe storage as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to establish a connection since we haven't got any, we're going to create a new connection. So if you look at over here you give the name of the connection and then you choose the integration runtime if you remember we spoke about three types of integration runtime um, when you're copying data from between two data sources that are publicly accessible uh, from any IP you can use the Azure integration runtime that's what we're going to uh, use now however you could just click on the new and you can just start creating your own uh, runtime as well for the authentication, I can either use uh, the account key, service principal uh, coming di directly from the storage account or I can use the Azure key vault as well. For this session, I'm going to keep it simple and use the connection string so that Data Factory can talk to the storage account, source storage account. I'm going to select the subscription and then my uh, source storage account that's going to be this one. Once I've done that, I can easily test the connection. So if I have hit on test connection, it's going to validate whether the connection between Data Factory and the storage is there or not. Once you're happy that the connection is successful, you can just hit on create. And this is going to have a linked service between your Azure Data Factory and your storage account. Cool. Um, now you can option use the option of browse and select the container. In this case, it's going to be source container. I'm going to hit on OK. You can just if you've got multiple or single file, you can just use a single file option as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the root option and give all the access to the uh, file so that it copies all the files. Now I'm going to click on next. And now this is going to ask about tell you about 
your format of file it's going to auto detect the file whether what type of file it is um, it has detected that's a text format and which is a comma separated um, you can preview the data as well that that's how my data looks like I've got majority in the majority of the files I've got three um, columns and I've got uh, multiple data underneath it so it's a text file with a comma separated value and uh, uh, you can use the compression type as well for now we're gonna keep it blank hit on next the target types gonna be now what is the target account whether it's a blob storage or Amazon S3 you need to select that as well right where do you want to send the files to in this case it's going to be Azure blob storage I don't have the connection the connection if you see over here that was for the source account uh, now I need to create a connection for destination account as well and it's going to be the similar process just going to be a recap for you it's going to be account key and I'm going to select the subscription I'm going to select the storage account and I'm going to test the connection and hit on create once I've done that I could just browse where I want to copy all my files it's going to be destination container and hit on ok and it's going to be um, the copy behavior is going to be uh, none and then you can set the maximum concurrent connection as well for the uh, make sure that files are concurrently uh, copied from one location to another one uh, you can have multiple metadata as well if you hit on next um, it is going to ask what type of file format again for the destination and then you can just give a name to your pipeline um, that's going to be my copy pipeline blob to blob blob to blob and then I'm going to hit on next um, features like these skip tolerance uh, fault tolerance uh, and compatible rows are actually the unique selling point of Azure Data Factory can use them as well cool I'm going to click on next and you get a holistic view on how your task kind of looks like so your task consists of um, um, copying of data from one blob storage to another one you can see all the details about your source and destination which is target um, you can edit the retries as well retry interval and all those sort of cool features hit on next this is going to run a validation uh, once the validation is successful it's going to let you save the pipeline now if you go to your author section and you see that you have already got one pipeline you've got two data sets one is source and another one is destination um, and you see all the details about your uh, destination because data set is where your data is being stored in this case it there are two data sets source and destination and it's going to be a csv uh, format and if I hit on the pipeline it consists of only one activity at the moment that's the clean canvas we have and at the moment we've got just one activity if you just uh, click over here you see all the all the details about uh, the activity that's gonna be uh, the name of the activity the source information destination information and all of them you can just add a trigger whether you want to do it now or later I am going to hit on now and click on OK this is going to start running the pipeline for us and within few seconds we should have um, the pipeline ready so if you come over here you will see that you've got all the information right over here um, we haven't got any triggers at the moment because it's still running if you click on view pipeline it's gonna take us to the pipeline page and you see that the copy activity was successfully run if you go to your destination container and hit on refresh you should see all the files popping up right over here all right so this was this easy it was to um, create one of the um, activity in your pipeline we created an activity we created a link service and we could just rerun this as well to run again and again all right, that's it for this video. In the next session, we're going to use an automated template and that's going to be 
move file from one storage account to another one one container to another one and we're going to learn some of the um, security features as well that how you could just integrate your data factory with um, Azure Key Vault rather than exposing your uh, container directly we could we'll learn about it and we'll also learn about how you could just use the template by default template given by Azure to achieve the activities under your data engineering pipeline I hope this was informative thank you